Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel. I know I have been kind of... Uh, yeah, I have put programming on pause for the last week. Um, I've been dealing with just playing through Half-Life Alex, and I know maybe some of you guys are more into the programming part. Um, just so you know, of course I'll be doing programming as well. Um, but my channel would be kind of like a mix of things. So sometimes you get programming, sometimes you get other stuff that I really, really am passionate about, like VR or cooking and whatever. So today you get programming. So if you were here for that, uh, yeah, cheers. I didn't like the last question, so I'm just gonna pick another one. <laughs> it was too much math. Uh, it's late at night. I'm kind of tired. I don't think we, we need to go with, with math for today with at least so much math. Relative sort array. That sounds something kind of interesting. Given two arrays, uh, the elements of the second array are distinct and the elements in the second array are also in the first array. So we have distinct arrays for the second array and also we know that the first, basically the second array is contained in the first array. Sort the elements of the first array such that the relative ordering of items in the first array are the same as in the second array. Okay. <coughs> elements that don't, don't appear in the second array should be placed at the end of the first array in ascending order. That sounds somewhat interesting, somewhat... Mm, tricky I guess let's see for example we have the first array right we have two three one three two four blah 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 in the second array we always have this dist distinct values good enough um, when we want to have an output that first what how, how did they uh, kind of state it Sorting the elements of the first array such that the relative ordering, I guess this would be uh, the first number to always look for, okay, of the items are the same as in the second array. So we basically here we see a two, we have to pick all the twos from here, put them into a, um, yeah, into a sorted array. Then we get a one, then we find all the ones, put them into this. So I am thinking we basically need to work starting from this array and then going over this array when we see values that um, that that uh, are matching to our current value that we're comparing with. We take those out of this array and um, yeah, I'll have to actually see how we can pop values at the distinct in indices. And I think that's that's going to be the major hurdle so far. Uh, we basically um, transplant those numbers into a, an output array and we go over each of those values here. Once we are done, we're basically left with, I don't know what's left, for example, we will have something like this that is left. Everything else will have been already transplanted. And what we have here could then uh, at the end, because uh, we can see here after the six, we are left with whatever, yeah, basically it's no longer going to be needed. We can sort that and uh, kind of attach it, append it to our array. Um, I think that would be the algorithm itself. So to repeat, we go over each of those distinct values. We search the value here, we take the value out, and this would be basically for each of those, we go maximum values of, yeah, we, we, maxi we do maximum the length of the whole remaining array. And the whole remaining array, of course, will always uh, be kind of reducing in size. Uh, we don't know how much, uh, I'm assuming runtime in this scenario would be kind of tricky. It is of course dependent on this size and the shrinking size of, uh, constantly shrinking size of this array. So uh, kind of hard to judge. 
but I'm kind of seeing something like M times N time, kind of, kind of something like this. Uh, would be cool if somebody clever would actually uh, give some some better uh, answer on runtime complexity because, to my knowledge, I cannot really um, find something on the spot right now. So, constraints: the length of both both arrays is maximum a thousand. Um, we know that the values are between zero and a thousand. Also good to know. Uh, of course, we know that ar array two has distinct values, and that each of those values in array two are also contained in array one. Um, how can we? Because I'm thinking about. Of course, you can uh, be going over. Like we take one value, you go over all those values, and. Um, I guess in this case we'll just do this pragmatically, but I think we can also do something like masking, which would actually not be a bad idea. Mask array. And I guess we need NumPy for that. Um, we wouldn't be using NumPy in this case, so I guess not. Um, let's see. Then let's go over to our uh, step back to our previous strategy. We only need to to know how to pop from array at by index exactly, and of course we'll probably be just popping uh, or just slicing. Del oh. I don't need to remove it though, I want to pop it. Let's pop. Mm -hmm. We can also specify the index, exactly what we want. So, for index and uh, value, let's call them index value in array 2, was it? Enumerating Enumerating array 2 and if you guys pro you should probably already know how enumerating works you basically get in the sync and the values for each of those uh, steps while going over the, the array so basically in this loop I have access to each of the indices and also each of the values that are located at those indices. So we're, we're going to be calling our output array and it will be empty. So while we are in our uh, array 2, we see now um, we actually don't even want to enumerate the first one. So I'll just go and say um, we are only going over the values. And now here though, we'll call them value one and value two. So we have an index and value one because we're looking at the first array. We are enumerating in the first array. And um, that means that for each of those values, we go here and we kind of start going over the, the indices. And now we say if value two equals value one, right um, like this so if our value here that we're looking for is matched somewhere we'll basically say out append so we'll basically append in our out array and what we are appending is array one and uh, quickly would be pop and we are also going to be giving the index so basically here we're looking for the 2, here we are at index 0, we see value is 2 and this is 2, so basically the matching value, we pop it at index 2 and basically append it here. We go here, would be 
index one and I'm not sure how it will work after popping with the index sync that's going to be interesting to see because you basically are cutting an index here right so are you continuing with index one or are you resetting the index after doing this operation here this pop uh, if we run into bugs I'm assuming this would be the first step to see um, otherwise you could always kind of copy the values first note kind of like no um, take a note of the indices that you found them and then pop them at the end right kind of lame but um, should work just fine so if that's the case I guess we'll adapt our algorithm uh, for that so we have this um, value and we, we do this for each of those values here we transplant them right we go over to the next value and at the end of both loops we are kind of like we already transplanted the twos for example the ones the fours the threes the nines and the sixes and then there is uh, basically some there are probably some values left here and what I could do is basically just say our alt would also append what is our um, basically we do a sorting operation on, on the remaining stuff in array one and this is exactly how they wanted it like everything that's not being used at the end needs to be appended in ascending order so we can uh, rest assured at least in theory that everything is now in our alt array and we can just return it now let's run the code see how things look like um, enumerate okay uh -huh. wondering what's the issue okay of course I don't have the keyword in sorry it's just talking and coding at the same time uh, it's an interesting new skill for me to learn um, I think it's helpful just just by uh, by the nature of that when you are at an interview you will be asked to actually explain your thought process so it's good to actually kind of practice that so what do we have we have our input and um, What's this? Yes, bo both of those arrays, right? The expected values are 2, 2, 2, 1, 4, 3. Um, I can see that here there is another 3 that I don't see transplanted in our... Because at the end we basically appended something that was not... Not how, not how we actually had to append them. Um, actually, at the end, I had to do something like basically this out would be the same as out when when I uh, kind of attach sorted uh, the sorted remaining array one to it, and we still get the wrong answer. Now the issue with that is, as you can see, we have everything actually kind of okay, but then we have a tree that is kind of stuck at the end here. It never actually got found. And now I'm wondering why that happened, because as we can see, we found all the tools. Then we went to the, um, right? Then we went to look for the, ones then we want to look for the fours uh, why would we have an issue finding the trees that's um, our, our first actually when I don't really know an intuitive answer or at least I don't have an intuitive answer to that I would actually be um, going over the algorithm and kind of proving the logic so what do we do we are going for each value in the second array. Now here we are going over each index and value in the first array enumerated. 
If we see that the values match, we append to the output array what we have from the first array, popping the index. And I'm assuming now this is exactly where the problem occurs. One eternity later. So, third strategy. <laughs> I think um, how a human being would go in ab on about and just kind of like uh, do, for example, our case as well. I think it's always good to actually think about this way because the human brain kind of kind of takes the shortcuts that are possible in this case uh, from from its point of view and kind of helps you think about it in this logical way. Um, if I were to be doing as a human and I had those elements uh, right in front of me, what I would do is actually I would just go take the two and actually just look at the two and then I would take the two out from here, put it somewhere else, but just kind of like, I guess from a human standpoint, it wouldn't matter how the order here is at the end. Um, in this case, you have to draw the parallel. Okay, here I would still need some something here to actually not mess with the indexing. And, um, or, yeah, uh, well, yeah, you would you would definitely want to be doing it like this. So you would go here, you would take the second two, you would take the third two, then you would go for the one and just take them out, put them into the other array. Simple as that. Um, at the end, I would basically just grab everything that's left, kind of pack them and then kind of sort them. And that is all. And we can kind of do the same thing here. Um, we can, well, not really pop things, we basically just leave them at that, uh, like that. But also, I will substitute them. So whenever I take some value from, from there, I would actually now substitute it with an empty value. At the end, we will be having empty values and some values that are kind of like left there. And what we could do with that is that now that all the, the empty places are kind of unique, you actually know what, what they are. What you could do is, um, well, I guess I need to get rid of them, right? <laughs> uh, Remove now from list. Let's see. Yes, something like this sounds uh, good. So le let's filter the, the non values. So our remainder, remainder array one would be a list, is it? Yes. Which we filter beforehand. We look for non values in array one. This is array one. And this remainder, now we can basically say, okay, we sort the remainder array one and we just append it. So uh, what, what did we basically change in the end? Um, we just kept our in the sync so we can um, do the kind of like removal of elements in place. In, inside the loop, uh, we just substitute everything that we removed with an empty with an empty value, um, basically a placeholder, so we can keep the index. We don't have issues then here. And then, uh, what is the remaining stuff? We just filter all the non-values. We sort them out. We could have actually sorted them here, and just append them. In this case, I mean, I don't really like the approach that much like this, but I think it works. And I think I still learned something interesting here, despite the confusion. Uh, not always what you see in the first place seems like that, not always what you think about in the first place uh, that looks super intuitive is the, the answer that you would actually 
you are abusing. It, it's actually sometimes you're so convinced convinced about the solution, but in the end it turns out to be not not the solution that you are um, able to use for this problem. And the second thing is uh, using the filter option or function. Never used it before. Um, sounds like something cool. I'll actually read upon it afterwards and see how how you can use it for other cases. And yeah, so that was this problem. I think it was not a, a hard problem. It, it's just uh, again one of those problems where you're kind of st st stuck in between multiple solutions, and yeah, some of them are actually not that good. Um, that was it for now. I hope you learned something, and um, yeah. Just give it a try yourself and see you next time. Bye bye.